This is the Project Gemini Update, brought to you by Rifical Records. And here's your host, Mark Anthony Hay. Greetings, friends, and welcome to episode 97 of the Project Gemini Update. Well, first things first, Happy New Year, my friends. It is now officially 2020. Who would have thunk it? So, I hope you all had a fantastic New Year's Eve celebration. Um, I had a great time. I watched a lot of uh, different celebrations. I went online and watched quite a few different ones as well. Uh, I was very interested in that for some reason this year. Uh, Later on, I kind of chilled out, uh, watched some TV, had the dog sleeping in her little bed. She was chilled out. I made myself a nice... uh, tea with rum which is something I never ever do because I don't drink at all so um yeah but that kind of hit the spot for some reason and uh yeah I had a good time and uh yeah I can't complain so here's to a good 2020 and thank you all for making 2019 a fantastic year for Project Gemini um the main thing that came out this year was the new album in the year 3073 book one uh also earlier in the year at the beginning of 2019 the vinyl version of man of science came out as well and a few eps and stuff like that which i already talked about before with you guys um but here's to looking to 2020 uh first thing on the agenda as i mentioned before is going to be the vinyl release of the album Uh, the cd did very well thank you very much and uh, the vinyl is up next. I know a lot of you are waiting for that. And uh, it is on route. It will be a colored vinyl again. Um, this time, though, I kind of windled it down to two possible colors. Uh, I'm not sure which one I'm going to decide on. But it's either going to be translucent red or translucent yellow. Uh, hey, give give your opinion. What do you think? Red or yellow? Uh, I'm anxious to hear your comments on that. Um, also, thank you very much to everybody who took advantage of my end of the year sale on my Bandcamp site. I had dropped down the price of the vinyl for Man of Science and for a brand new day. I didn't have too many brand new day albums left. I think I had about 20 at the time. And uh, according to my page now, I'm down to about eight or seven. So not very many left. So if you haven't gotten a record yet, you may want to grab it. I did say at the end of the year I was going to put it, put it back to normal price. And I'll wait a couple more days just to see if anybody trickles in at the last minute. I had somebody last night at around uh, you know near midnight my time come in and jump on one. So people are still aware of it. So if you need a copy of it, now's the time. You'll never get it cheaper than it is now, which is ten dollars Canadian plus shipping. Um, what else? Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, that's uh, all about the old stuff, like brand new day in uh, Man of Science. And uh, like I said, this is up next, so keep your eyes open. There will be there will be a pre-order starting soon for that. Uh, just waiting for the uh, acetate, the lacquer that's getting done at Lacquer Channel right now to come back. I was told that either uh, January 2nd or the 3rd I would receive it. So once I get it and if it's good... I will start on the pre-order right away. Now, in tradition of most uh, sites or channels, and uh, I don't like to follow, you know, many uh, channels and what they do. I like to do my own thing. But uh, I do want to talk about some of the records that came out in 2019 that I enjoyed and that I got. So this is not going to be any kind of, you know, top 20 or anything like that. I'm only going to just talk about really five albums that really... uh, caught my attention and that's not to say that there wasn't other great albums out there was plenty of great music out there in 2019 and uh i enjoyed quite a bit of it to be quite honest with you a lot of it i picked up and uh became aware of through Bandcamp. there's a lot of great bands out there uh doing things right now and uh yeah i really uh i really enjoyed a lot of that music that was out there so um, let's talk about some of the music, though, that I really enjoyed here. 
And we'll start off with, uh, and this is not in any order whatsoever. This is just uh, five records that kind of caught my attention. One of them is Dreams Theater, Distance Over Time. So I keep forgetting the title of this album for some reason. But yeah, this is a really good album. Um, and actually a pleasant surprise for me because I had kind of, I'm not going to say lost hope, but I've kind of almost given up on Dream Theater after they released The Astonishing. Um, I know it was a very big uh, project, a very, you know, sort of a grandiose project on their part, but uh, it, it just didn't connect with me at all. And I was starting to lose hope that they were trying to turn themselves into some you know, modernistic Pink Floyd and making nothing but albums that sound like the wall or try to sound like the wall. Um, it just didn't connect me with me. But this definitely did. The wise thing that they did with this is they all got together in a cabin, all got together, started working on music together as a band, and uh, they sort of made their songs more uh, back to their roots, sort of more, you know, heavier in spots you know, melodic more in spots. They didn't try to make it so uh, reliant on one another, like in how in a concept is, you know, we have to, one song has to connect to the other to the other. These were just great songs that they did. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a, gr it's a good album. And uh, it definitely shows that they have a lot more to give, I think, in the future. And I'm very optimistic that the, that the next Dream Theater record will be even better. Now, some of the other records I'm going to show you were not necessarily records that were 2019 releases, but were records that came out in 2019. Example of that is the Beatles Abbey Road reissue that came out. Now, I'm one who doesn't really like these kind of records in the sense that, not, not that I don't like reissues, I love reissues. Uh, especially if they're records that are hard to find. Uh, I really enjoy getting, you know, records I would love on vinyl and were difficult difficult to find in original form. Um, but this record is, you know, you could get it anywhere. You know, it was so plentiful in the, you know, in the market. But I was curious to see what Giles did with it. I did get the Sgt. Pepper uh, reissue that he did the remix of it. And I, I, I enjoyed it. It was... Uh, an interesting take on it and I think that on this album he did just as well a, a just as good a job on this record I think um, you know the, the bass and drums are much more impactful and it's definitely the drums the one thing I notice about the remixes that he's done so far is that the drums definitely benefited from the remixing uh, the, the songs are great as they always have been and uh I kind of look at it like he kind of added a little bit more polish on it and made some things that were, you know, maybe not so clear in the mix a bit more present in the mix. So um, sometimes people think that it it sounds like a completely new record when he does that. I don't think that's the case with this. Uh, I just think that it's more of a kind of a, a spit shine kind of thing. Like he kind of polished it up a bit more. So that's uh, definitely one that... Uh, you know, is high on my list of great records that came out. And I enjoyed this very much on vinyl, listening to it. Uh, great, great, great stuff. And this is just a single album version. I didn't buy the, the, the double one with all the, you know, alternate takes and stuff like that. Um, and now another record, <clears throat> pardon me, my throat's a bit scratchy today. Uh, another record that falls into that same category is this here. And you know, I'm a big David Bowie fan. Sorry for the glare. But this is a David Bowie Space Oddity. And if you look at the hype sticker, if I can get it in. There you go. Uh, it's the 50th anniversary remix by Tony Visconti. Who is the original uh, producer of the record, I believe. And he did a great job on this. This album is one that really uh, benefited from a remix. And when you hear people say sometimes that they hear things that they've never heard before on records, the, this one, I can believe it because there was stuff that was brought up. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of his music, even back to this album. Uh, it's not his best, but 
I do enjoy it, and there was stuff in these mixes that I'd never noticed before. Probably because they were in the mix, very low in the mix, and sometimes people just leave stuff out of mixes, so it's possible that Tony brought up some stuff that was not present in the earlier mixes, which made this uh, better, you know, which is interesting, because sometimes people leave stuff out of mixes because they don't think it benefits the song. But I'd highly recommend this. This came out on CD and vinyl. Uh, the vinyl sounds absolutely fantastic. I, I highly, highly recommend it for people who love vinyl. And uh, yeah, pick it up. It's a great, great remix. And uh, it, it adapted really well to vinyl. Now, the other record I want to talk about now will appear boop, here. And that's Joe Bailey's record uh, that just came out this year. I don't remember the title of it. Joe's going to kill me because I keep forgetting the name of his title. I'll just put the title up here. But yeah, this album is <clears throat> fantastic. It was the reason why I wanted to work with Joe on my own record for in the, uh, in the year 3073. I thought that he's just a fantastic writer. He's like me, multi-instrumentalist multi and a uh, <clears throat> great singer. And, uh, you know, when I listen to this album... Everything about it, um, I really enjoy. Songs like Gravity, particularly Gravity, I think is a great song on there. Um, I really enjoy listening to it. It has a lot of the same sort of stylings that I like to do. <clears throat> Whereas I have a little bit more, um, I guess, heavier tendencies towards maybe like, you know, Iron Maiden or uh, some, you know, more uh, guitar heavier versions of Rush stuff and, you know, st things like that. He's more like of the more progressive side, maybe a little bit more Flower Kings and stuff like that. And uh, it, 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 but I think it works great. His music is fantastic. I highly, highly recommend it. And uh, if you don't have his records, uh, they're only available on digital, unfortunately. I mean, you know, some people can't afford to press stuff on CD or vinyl, but that's fine. But digital is a just as good medium, in my opinion, to listen to this stuff. And you can get it on his Bandcamp site, and usually he has it for free or just, you know, name your price, So, which is extremely generous for such a fantastic record that he put out. So yeah, Joe Bailey uh, and uh, his fantastic 2019 release. So the last album that I'm going to be talking about here is the one that I, if I'm going to rank them, if I was to have ranked these, the only one that I was certain of that would be number one is this one. Because when it was announced that it was coming out, I really wanted to, you know, believe that this is going to be a fantastic release. And it was. Because, let's be honest, the last time this band put out a studio record of any type, uh, it wasn't good. Not good at all. And I'm a huge supporter of them. I mean, in fact, I'm involved in a podcast about them. So that kind of must have gave it away. Because I'm talking about Yes... And I'm talking about this release. And I'm going to take it out of the sleeve because this is giving me a huge glare. This is from a page. Now what this is, is a bunch of songs. Uh, there's actually four songs in one uh, single edit. If you'll see on here. Oops. And... These songs were written, <clears throat> excuse me, these songs were written back during the Fly From Here sessions in, I believe, 2000. Oh God, my memory is so terrible today. I'll put up here the, the date. Anyways, uh, back, back in the Fly From Here times, they were working on this. And uh, due to politics, as usual, uh, Oliver Wakeman, who was one of the people who was in the band at the time playing keyboards, and one of the principal writers of these songs, got asked to leave the band once Trevor Horn got involved, and decided, and Trevor decided it was a better idea to bring Trevor, to bring Jeff Downs in to play keyboards. Um, I love Jeff Downs, he's a great keyboard player, but after hearing this material, I think it was a major mistake that they didn't keep these songs at least, and put them on that record, it would have made the record even greater than it already was. And uh, everything on this album is is fantastic. If you don't own this, uh, I don't know how available it is now to get. It was only available, I think, through 
um, through Burning Shed and maybe through uh, the Yes official site. Um, but it's it's an amazing album. Um, and then you got the, when you bought the CD package version of it, you also got the Live in Lyon live album in which Oliver played with them and Benoit David was singing at that time. And Benoit's singing on here as well. And easily some of the best stuff that he's ever committed to tape. So I highly, highly recommend this album if you want to go out and pick up something that's um, a big surprise. Let's just put it this way. If you think that Yes yes is the best uh, musical days have passed, you'll be very surprised when you hear this. Okay, so let's just leave it at that for now. Um, I was thinking about maybe doing a few other things on this video, but I don't want to make the video too long. And uh, one of the things I did want to do very soon, and in fact, I think the next video I'm going to do is that is I'm going to conclude the uh, making of a making of an album series. I'm going to do the keyboard uh, video next, and I'm going to run through a little bit of the vocal process and the mix, which will lead us to uh, perfectly to the point of where I am now, which is going to be getting the lacquer cut for the vinyl. So, um, again, apologies for it taking so long to conclude that series. Um, but, you know, as you know, being a one-man operation here, there's a lot of stuff that I have to do to get things rolling. And, uh, you know, sometimes time is at a limit. But that is next on my list. The next video that you will see go up will be the next part in the making of an album series. So thank you all for watching. Uh, and... I hope you all had a great 2019. Thank you for being along with me on the ride, which is Project Gemini. And 2020 will have more Project Gemini. Book two will be on the way. And plus, there is something else that is coming. Uh, you might have caught a little glimpse of it or a little foreshadow of it during this video. So, and I'll talk more about that in uh coming video very very soon so thank you again for watching and uh, have a great day everybody